Suzuki Superboat had become an all Wanganui affair and it was fitting that at round five, the penultimate round of the series, it was the two, Leighton Manel and Pat Dillon, battling for the front running position. Under lights, they're spectacular and have a look at the points. Leighton Manel leads it in Hummer time with 112. Pat Dillon in second place. Duncan Wilson tied with Nick Berryman. He's been the story of Suzuki Superboat this year and in fifth place it is Peter Hose. Well, as I mentioned, going into the penultimate round, it is Pat Dillon second in points in Suzuki Superboat, but mechanical issues may just have thwarted his championship charge. We've been playing with some more boost in the blower, and I think we've just got a little bit lean in its blowing a head gasket on one side. So um, we don't want to do major damage to it, so I think we're better off to put it to bed for the night. Well, desperate bad luck there for uh, the Marshal, Pat Dillon, in the Hulk. He's out, and that is going to affect the championship chase. Duncan Wilson is setting the pace with that 51-2, but Leighton Manel is right on him. I see Brent White's beating me the first time this season, so I've got to pull half a second, otherwise we go home. So Nick Berryman knows what he has to do. Let's see if he can do it. I mentioned before that he's been the story of Suzuki Superboat and he's done it through consistency. He's had a couple of bad rounds in the championship where he's had mechanical issues, but he's put those all behind him now and he is ready to do the job here under lights at Whanganui. So this team's done a 55-2-1-4 in the second qualifying session, backed up by a 55-3, slide up to a 56 flat in qualifying session four. So just finding their feet, but hey, it's totally different now under lights. Split coming up for Berryman, 27-65. First boat out in the round of eight for Suzuki Superboat. Look, and I think Nick and uh, Rochelle will be the first to um, concede that they haven't quite got the horsepower of the Leighton Manels or the Duncan Wilsons or the, uh, the Pat Dillons for that matter. But as I said before, they're doing it with consistency. This is a good consistent run for the pairing from Rotorua. So the finish line coming up for Nick Berryman, Rochelle Berryman. Down to the line they come now, 56.873, here's the benchmark, he's the one they'll be chasing in Suzuki Superboat. Will this guy be able to catch him, Brent White and Morris Edwards? Desperate bad luck for them at the previous round with uh, mechanical issues, they did the sporting thing, they let Duncan Wilson borrow the boat so he could keep his championship hopes alive, but then had all sorts of problems uh, on their own. You just hear him get out of the throttle there a couple of times using the full width of this Whanganui jet sprint track. Well, here is a man that has got plenty of horsepower. It's a Donovan aluminium block, uh, big block, 408 cubic inches in uh, Kiwi Battler. 26.67, the split. So he's up on Nick Berryman by about a second. When you see, see how close he's getting to the islands and the boat just gets a little bit untidy and then tries to settle itself down again as he works his way down towards the finish line now. Brent White and Kiwi Battler. Flames oh, out. Oh, it's problems. It's flamed out, that is game over for Brent White. That was going to be a solid run. We're not sure what happened there, but it, it appeared that our fuel cap wriggled off because things were vibrating. We were going pretty well. Hmm, hmm. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, these things happen. Chris Munro makes a welcome return to the Jet Pro New Zealand Jet Sprinting Championship all the way from the deep south. and. Just listen to this thing. You won't get a good indication from the onboard shot, but wait till we cut to the outboard shot. This is a screamer. It's a pro charge 427. He's another one that will have uh, indifferent memories of Whanganui because, as I mentioned, he made his debut in the season last year and crashed big time under lights. Yeah, arguably it was one of the biggest crashes of last year's championship. 51.7's been the quickest today. 25.65 at the split, and he's a second quicker than Brent White was. Well, he's on target for another maybe high 51, low 52 here. Brent Scammell doing the navigational duties. A long time uh, partnership between these two. 52 would be a good lap in this sort of company. We've seen sort of times down in the high 49s with Duncan Wilson. And down to the finish line they come now. It will be a 52, 52, 706. It felt safe. It felt real good that time. We eased off on a couple of those tight corners that we're having a bit of trouble getting out of. And uh, yeah, well, I think it was that helped. We're still losing a second off the line, if not more. But yeah, we can't help that tonight. Got a lot of slip. No, it's just um, loading up on fuel, and it's uh, it just won't wind into it till it uh, clears itself. So I've got a smoother boat out that's got plenty of power. It was just we drove it a little bit too wild. If I can just smooth it out and settle the boat down, I'm sure we'll make better time. But it's just a matter of uh, being able to do that. 
Well, Peter and Gary House have been uh, Mr. Consistency because they've been firmly in the 52s. But when the pressure comes on, well, things change. They need to be a little bit quicker than that if they want to make the next couple of eliminations in Suzuki Superboat. Yeah, we've seen some 49s from the likes of Duncan Wilson and Leighton Manal. 52 4 has been their quickest lap to this point, but this is their first lap under lights and it's gone wrong. They've flamed out the Mazda. Well, we should point out that once the engine cuts out, there's no steering and obviously there's no brakes, so that's the end for Peter Host. Rob Coley. Well, is he going to take it conservatively or is he going to really stand on it? Because over the last couple of rounds, he's come into his own in Poison Ivy. He's really got to grips with this massive engine in the back of the boat, worked out the handling, and he's a threat, not so much in the championship because of his early season problems, but certainly for the outright win tonight. 705 cubic inches. They, like Nick Berryman, have probably been the best improving team in Suzuki's Superboat. So their best lap to date has been a 51-0 set in qualifying session four. Four split is a 25-58, and that's the best split so far in the top eight. Well, that is a bit of a surprise, but it keeps them in the hunt, and that's what they've got to do. Reese Townsend is the navigator, his first season sitting beside Rob. Amazing story with Coley. Came into jet sprinting with no previous motorsport experience, save for a pretty quick jet ski. Pretty quick jet boat too, 51-7. We were doing that 40, uh, 49s earlier, uh, it's going to be hard to get back down to that until, we've, until we're comfortable with the course. It certainly was different for me that first time out, so uh, yeah, a bit harder. Well, Leighton Manel will be thinking championship, but uh, he's another one that doesn't back off too lightly. And look at the times before, 52.04 in the qualifying round four. That was in the light, and then the 51 in the darkness in the top 12. What can he do here as the darkness has really settled in now? And you can see what they're up against. Sure, there's a bit of lens uh, flare from our cameras adapting to the lights, but that's what Kelly and Leighton Manella got to, to contend with as well. So with three boats having problems in the eight, Pat Dillon not starting, Brent White with the DNF and Peter Host with the DNF, all Leighton Manel and Duncan Wilson need to do is finish to consolidate their run through to the top five. So Chris Munro, Nick Berryman and Rob Colley will also get through to the five. Split for Leighton Manel, 24-49, comfortably the quickest. And how many times have we said all he has to do is finish, but Leighton Manel being Leighton Manel, he'll be going out, he'll be charging, make no mistake about it. This is quick, Phil. It is very fast, 50.965 for Leighton Manel. It's hard to see and there's always wash because you've been through there and, and uh, the wash is going up the bank so everything looks like water. So it's uh, quite tricky. Duncan Wilson, Jamie Lee Lupton carrying the uh, livery of the boys in blue, the police boat. And it's been a very fast police boat, 49.5, the only one sub 50 in the qualifying. Yeah, it's just a shade quicker than the old Deodar on the Auckland Harbour. Where did this design come from, lads? Well, you can guarantee the boys from Whanganui there'll be a story behind it. So Duncan Wilson's been the quickest through the day at 49-1 in qualifying session three. Trying to play catch up in the championship after boat problems at the previous round. 25-2, so he's slower than Leighton Manel to the split. Well, can he bring the big block home? Lethal injection is the boat. But today it's car 54, where are you? Well, we can tell you we're at the Shelterview Aqua Track. Yeah, I don't think too many of New Zealand's police cars have got 640 cubic inches either. He can afford to be conservative here. He just needs to finish this lap to get through to the five. And I think that's what he's doing here. And he does so, 52-1. So safely into the five is Duncan Wilson with that 52-1. But look at Rob Coley, second again with a 51-76. But everyone's chasing Leighton Manel with a 59-65. Missing out Peter Hose and Brent White. So this is the top five in Suzuki Superboat. And once again, there again is Nick and Rochelle Berryman. They get their last minute preparations and they're on the journey. Riverjet is the boat. Once again, it's going to be a smooth start and hopefully for the pair from Rotorua, a smooth finish as well. Another good performance and their times haven't really dropped off, Jamie. A lot of guys have sort of uh, hit the peaks in the, in the uh, light conditions and then dropped away in the, the darkness, but these guys have been consistent right through, around about the 56 second mark. Very, very consistent. Here is the split for the Berrymans, 27-3-9, so he's up on his previous best from the top eight by about three tenths, so he's heading in the right direction. And they've just got better and better as the season has gone on. They've learned the boat, they've learned the courses. And they say there's uh, 
Time in the seat is what makes the difference, and it's the second season for this combination, and it's been a good one. This should be a big improvement over their run in the top eight. Look for a high, maybe 55, just misses it with a 56 0 2. Chris Munro, Brent Scammell next to go in uh, Car Rail Water Jet. It's a Mack craft built in the deep south of uh, Bluff. And you heard him say in his interview, they're just having a bit of trouble getting to grips with the, the right uh, rotors and vanes and things in the jet unit. The boat has got huge, huge potential. We saw that at this round last year, but it all ended horribly for Chris and Brent. Let's hope they can bring it home this time round. It's a long way to come, but no result. Looking for the split for Chris Munro last time. It was a 25-65, slows up a little bit, 26-19. And unlike Pat Dillon's ejected blowing 410, the supercharger in this boat actually literally sits down beside the engine. That's right, keeps the, uh, the weight down, the centre of gravity down, makes the boat supposedly handle better. Macraft boat heading down towards the finish line now. Chris Munro out of the South Island, 26-19 at the split. 3-2-7-4. So a quick look at the table sees Chris Munro on the top with that 53-2 as opposed to Nick Berryman's 56-0. Duncan Wilson is about to upset the apple cart here because he's been in the 50s. In fact, he's been in the 49s. Well, if he can keep it in the drink, you'd expect Wilson to go quickest here. Oh, the change of direction and the lights. He's got the police lights on. He's got the red and blues. He's got the police livery. Lethal Injection is normally the boat's name, but today it's running under the colours of the New Zealand Police Department, and it's running fast, 24-70 fast at the split. Well, that is about five tenths quicker than what he did in the top eight, but I think Philly was just being a little bit conservative in the eight just to make sure he got through to the five. Well, like all of the other drivers we've talked to, he said visibility is a real problem. You can see it from the onboard shot, the reflection off the water, off the islands to the water. As he said before, just looks like water out there. Pretty fast water, though. 56-28 for Wilson. So he now goes to the top of the tree in Suzuki Superboat. In second place now, it is Chris Munro. You know, last year in Suzuki Superboat under lights at Whanganui, it was Richard Burt that uh, took the win, but he had his dramas. This guy has had his dramas all through the season, but as I said before, in the last two rounds, he has come good. And uh, looking on his performance in the, the five, he was sitting second quickest. Rob Coley, Reese Townsend, the boat is Poison Ivy. You said Richard Bird had his dramas. He set the boat on fire. Yeah, but he still got the wind, and I guess that's all that counts. That's what these guys will be thinking anyway. Split coming up. Rob Colley, 25-51. He's seven hundredths up on his previous run in the top eight. So, like Nick Berryman, he's heading in the right direction at the right end of the weekend. Well, I remember when he first climbed into this boat, he said one thing he was going to make sure, he wasn't going to be afraid of it. 705 cubic inches of big block in the back of it. Probably around about 1,300-odd horsepower. Oh, what about the change of direction then? I thought he was going to go straight ahead there, Jamie. It shows the horsepower. Berryman's gone at 52-2 for Coley. So Duncan Wilson stays on top in Suzuki Superboat, and in second place now is Rob Coley. Things are going all right. We're still struggling a little bit to make horsepower, so hopefully we'll just address that. And um, down on those straights when we're nailing it, we're just struggling a little bit there with power, so um, hopefully sort of that. Might pick a bit of time up. I wouldn't have thought power's what you want. I'd have thought visibility is what you want. I'm not finding it too bad out there actually, to be honest, it doesn't seem any different to driving at day, perfectly honestly. So late Manel comes to the start line now, the only one to be sub 25 at the split, he did that in the 8th. This is the 5 of Suzuki Superboat, you're riding with Hummer Time here, Leighton and Kelly Manel. So the Berrymans have been eliminated from that very good run from Rob Coley, so now Chris Munro sits on the bubble, and you'd think, you'd expect Lake Manel to go through pretty comfortably in this beautiful Hummer time. Sprint Tech Hull. Coming up to the split now, it's another 24 second split. So he is heading in the right direction at the moment as Lake Manel. We've said it so many times, he doesn't know when to back off, and that's cost him. It certainly cost him last season with mechanical issues. One one hundredth of a second quicker at the split than his run in the top eight. And look at the way the boat sits on the water, it's perfect, it's just flat. He's boating the whole course, but now he's got a, he's problem. Got a problem. Well, maybe another mechanical issue here for Hummer time. Couldn't happen at a worst possible time. One round to go in the championship. He's going to bring it to the line, but the time slows up 55-5. Manel is gone. Well, no change in the order, so we've found our three. It'll be Duncan Wilson, Rob Coley and Chris Munro from the Deep South.
Well, there is the problem for Leighton Manel. The steering wheel's come off. Unbelievable. The crew can't believe it either. Pretty freaky. We were bloody lucky to finish. I don't know how they were. We finished actually. I, I had it in my lap and I sort of thought, well, I'll just steer it round and maybe we'll get round for third. But um, no, I wasn't brave enough to. You were pretty lucky it didn't actually happen in a particularly bad place. Well, it actually did. I went in the fastest. When it broke, it was in the fastest section. So. Um, yeah, it was just, I felt it drop to my legs and it was still hanging by a thread, but uh, yeah. Hey, we've got the boats in one piece and uh, points aren't too bad, so. Um. We're down to the final in uh, Suzuki Superboat. Cow Rail Jet is the boat. This is Chris Munro and Brent Scammell. They've progressed further than they did last year when they had an almighty crash at Whanganui in the early eliminations. 52s and 53s, you just get the feeling, Jamie, it's going to have to be faster than that if they want to take the cup. Yeah, I think they're going to have to be really solidly into the 50s, mid 50s to really be on the pace with Duncan Wilson and even Rob Coley. He's been down in that low 51 second range, just clips the bank there, you could hear the hits. Split 25, 80. That's his fastest split so far, even with the mistake, so that was going to be potentially a very good run. Still could be, he's not suffering for horsepower. The Ram Charge 427 in the Mack Craft. Chris Munro and Brent Scammell. Car Rail Jet is the sponsor and the boat's name. Heading down towards the finish line now. Once again, the darkness hasn't made it any easier. They go through the arch and it's a 52-5-6-1. It's a big improvement from his run in the top five. You're looking at the better part of seven tenths of a second is the big 705. Poison Ivy is on the race course. I was just going to say, how fast did he come out of that start shoot? He shot like a bullet out of a gun as Rob Coley. And he knows there's all to play for here. He had a fantastic round at the previous round in Hastings. He knows the potential of the boat. He knows what he can do. Yeah, well, we talk about the cubic inches and the horsepower of this boat, but being a big, big block, you're also talking at a whole heap of talk. 24.89 for Coley. And again, he's well up on his previous best. It was a 25.5 in the top five split for Poison Ivy. That's right, and that one transferred into a 51.7, and that'll be good enough to knock down Chris Munro's performance. So it's looking good. Duncan Wilson did a 50.6 to get him into the top three. This is going to be seriously quick for Rob Coley. 50.66. And he goes to the top of the tree with one run to come, and that is Duncan Wilson. So it is Coley, Munro, and Wilson to come. Jamie Lee Lupton sits alongside him. Lethal injection is the boat. And look at those times. The 56 they did in the five, that's pretty near identical to what Rob Coley's just done. So the pressure's on here, Jamie. Well, he can't afford to let up. He hasn't got a lot of time to play with. He needs to make an improvement on his best lap time in the dark. This boat's been down in the 49 ones in the light. Coming up for the split, that'll give you an indication of what it's gonna be, 24, 23. That's the quickest split of the nighttime session. And that's what you want, isn't it? An elimination competition, you want to get faster and faster and faster as the night goes on, and that's what Duncan Wilson's done. Well, he was two tenths quicker than Leighton Manel from the top five run, and he's six tenths quicker than Rob Coley. We thought Coley's lap was impressive in the big 705. This boat's giving away a few cubic inches, but only a few. 49, 471, sub 50 for Duncan Wilson. So he takes all the apples in Suzuki Superboat. In second place, it will be Rob Coley. And in third place, it is Chris Munro. The boat handled well, and yeah, we sort of put it through a few dark holes and just had to back myself and put it there and it worked out for us. Sure did, mate. That was a, that was an epic drive, 49. Or was it a four? I didn't even know, was it 49? Yeah, oh, yeah, well, I, I actually just said before that I didn't think we'd get down to a 49 today, tonight, so. Oh, that's awesome, yeah, because we had a few muck-ups too out there, but oh, that's all good. So going into this round, there was six points separating the top three, and you can see for yourself that this championship very much up for grabs. Leighton Manel still leads it on 140. Duncan Wilson second, and Nick Berryman nipping at his heels on 133. Right behind him, Pat Dillon.
the second time we've visited the Shelterview Aquatrack in Whanganui, but this time it is under lights. It's round five, the penultimate round of the Jet Pro New Zealand Jet Sprinting Championships, and there is plenty to play for. A tight race at the top of Scott Water Jet Group A, and equally tight in Suzuki Super. <laughs>